Hey guys, and welcome to Behind the Bunker. It's Monday night. Did you know that? Monday night at 8. We do this every Monday night. We do a live paintball show that goes for about 50 minutes and uh, an after show that we do as well, which goes on YouTube. If you guys are watching this and can't sit through the whole thing, you know you can download this as a podcast and listen to it anytime that you guys want, um, whether you're at work or school or commuting, whatever you want. So thank you guys for, for tuning in and checking us out. Three big announcements tonight, one bigger than the, than the next. Uh, we have a vault segment from Joe. We have a topic tonight. We have mail time. We have prices Right. And uh, well, lots more to get to tonight. But uh, yes, Gavin, I'll get to you, Mr. Hacky. Gavin Sharma's with us from Terra Tech Industries. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I wasn't <laughs> muted, damn it. Uh, I got a little coffee cough, but it's not the COVID. I promise you that. Uh, thank you so much, folks, for joining us this evening. It is uh, 499, 499, uh, one away from the biggin'. Um, and, but we appreciate you joining us this week as well. So make sure you hit like and share and let people know what you're doing on a Monday night. It's going to be a great show. I promise you that. It'll be a mediocre show. Next week will be the big show, I think. Well, well whatever. We'll give him something tonight. L- let's see. <laughs> yeah, and Josh Zubizabrikas is with us tonight. Yeah, let's phone in just a small amount of effort tonight and save it all for next week. Well, if we do too good of a show tonight... It'll be too challenging next week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're waiting on Joe. Hopefully he'll be able to make it shortly. So we will start the show uh, without him. As I said, three big announcements. One you already probably know. Uh, Looking for my mouse. Here you go. The 500th episode is next Monday night. Monday, March 29th starts at 8 p.m. And that'll be on Facebook and YouTube. And at midnight, it'll be on all of our podcast uh, streams. So wherever you get your better podcast. Uh, Announcement number two. Uh, you guys know that the iconic paintball team documentary is being worked on. That's from paintball.media. Um, but what you didn't know is someone very famous is going to be narrating that. I've already sent in uh, for first episode, and uh, I have 12 more to do, which hopefully will uh, will come shortly. So is who's, the fam- who's the famous person who's going to be doing is it, it? Joe? It should be it should be Josh with his microphone. Or Matt who is it? Who or... is it? <laughs> Me, you jerk ass. Oh, <laughs> I thought I said. I thought that. you said famous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, infamous. Infamous. Yeah, infamous. There we go. Like El Guapo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, before I give you the last and final announcement, uh, let's welcome Joe to the show. Let's see if his uh, stuff's working. It might be working. I don't know. I couldn't get internet on either the Chromebook or the Mac or anything, so I'm using my phone in the basement with my AirPods, and I'm holding it in my hand because I'm done with the pandemic, quite <laughs> frankly. There we go. So Joe's feisty tonight, and luck- luckily we were able to still get him, so that's uh, that's good. So do you guys want to hear the announcement? This will affect all of us, and I should have checked with you all before I did this. Uh, Paintball Extravaganza. Isn't happening in person, but there will be a virtual extravaganza, and that's happening Wednesday, April 14th, starting at 8 p.m., and that'll be done by all of yours truly. Uh, this will be Behind the Bunker's annual paintball extravaganza. Yes, there's no tangible boots-on-the-ground extravaganza, but there is... <laughs> But uh, but yeah, we're going to do a virtual one. Uh, a lot of vendors have already sent in their uh, their video product videos for us. Uh, so we'll be able to watch them with you guys, look at all the new products, look at all the great offerings, and uh, chat about. And uh, we're going to have some special guests with us, as we always do when we go to Extravaganza. And uh, I, I guess this year I'm going to have to get you guys, uh, I don't know, some local fried chicken or something. <laughs> Will we be able to see the videos in advance so we know what we're prefacing them or no? Uh, we're working on it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we're giving them enough time. That's April the 14th. We already have quite a few videos. We're waiting on a few others. And there's a few other companies that are waiting to join in as well. So uh, hopefully you guys will be able to see them, you know, half hour, hour before the show. And then away we go. Um. So we'll look forward to that, guys. That's uh, Wednesday, April 14th. Starts at 8 p.m. right here on BehindTheBunker.com or our Facebook or YouTube channel. Tonight, later on in the show, we're going to be talking to you guys uh, about this. This question comes of uh, courtesy of Tyler Fair. Uh, his question was, is Mech destined for the same arms race of 2000, and t- uh, 2000 to 2004? Uh, we'll get to that in more detail in a little while. Uh, so Only thank- as long as they're nicely anodized. Yes. And thank you guys for joining us. And remember, you guys can download this as a podcast and as uh, a good uh, 
Good follow on Twitter. Mark Norman says, podcasts are like babies. They're too easy to create and not everyone should have one. Um, maybe we shouldn't, but... Uh... <laughs> it, it, yeah, is that a... Explain. <laughs> is that a dig towards us? Damn. <laughs> well, you know all these big celebrities, especially Mark Norman, probably listens to our show, right? Yeah. For sure. Um, this was a comment uh, from our YouTube, uh, um, our YouTube video from last week from Jacob. Pa- Palomino. He says, awesome show, guys. Thanks for making my Tuesday bearable. Uh, quick thought, you guys should release a BTB uh, Behind the Bunker original soundtrack alongside the 500th episode. <laughs> what would be our soundtrack other than we could have our bed? We could mail have, time. We, oh, we could have mail time. We could have an extravaganza Bells medley. <laughs> extravaganza. But what, are you kidding me? Tra- chase At least traffic Morris? Confused. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can finish off with a hidden track at the end where it's just us saying French lick and Joe making his tongue noise. (laughs) 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 That's the bonus hidden track. That's gold, baby, gold. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, a lot of you guys can't watch on Monday night, uh, so you you watch on YouTube or listen to our podcast, so I appreciate the correspondence. Uh, Last week we showed uh, this. This was for our friend uh, George Hay, Uh, but then uh, Wolf posted something this week. Tactical croc boots, combat croc boots. Those would be good for going to Vietnam then, Joe, with would have quick drainage. Yes, it's true. What do you need quick drainage for when you never get off the boat? Tigers. Oh, you need cool. mangoes. I saw tigers. that. I saw that and I was so impressed that I was like, does this exist? Can somebody print this for me? Because that's a good post game shoe footwear, you know, when you're going to the pub to regale each other in stories and, and have uh, beverages. Um, I would wear that out too, uh, to uh, a restaurant. It's you wear sturdy crop, enough not to roll an ankle, boots? but breathable enough to cut down on trench foot. Well, it has extra ankle support with that, uh, with the patented croc ankle support on the back there. The oh, that's strap. the racing strap. <laughs> <laughs> a racing strap. That's what uh, do you have the picture that Bob Spicer uh, posted as well I on the I didn't grab it. I should have. Well, I'll have that for next week. I'm sorry. It was in my list and I missed it today. Would you wear that's this, okay. Joe, in... Okay, so I know that, you know, when you're wearing your boots, they're waterproof and all. But would you wear these knowing you're going into a muddy, rainy day? Think that would help your Arc feet boots? or hinder it? Yeah. I don't I don't think so. I would Not still want to wear I'd still wear my wool I'd still wear my wool socks and my Gore-Tex boots. These Even are if- uh wear into the beach boots. That's what these are. Now, if it was That's a really true. wet environment, you can use the Altama Maritime Assault shoes. With uh-huh. That's true. Yeah. There you go. And they're they're good for doing Navy foot signals we talked about before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, this was posted uh, by Ruthless the other day, and both you and I both posted uh, or commented on this, Gavin. What do you think of this hoodie, guys? I'm like, John, if you're paying attention, it's not a hoodie, my friend. Look closer. That's a rain jacket, a rain slicker, if you wish. Oh, it is, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was Licker. quite impressed with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's made in uh, French Lick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, when I saw that, I was really, really impressed, uh, intrigued, and I'm, I'm definitely going to follow Ruthless uh, on this journey because if I can get one a multicam or something very similar. Um, oh, with can a, they print them? With a BTB logo on the back or a Flag Hitters logo on the back, I think that will be exceptional. Yeah, yeah. So That'd be pretty I've cool. I've got my eye on it. For sure. On the eye on the tiger. Um, so, oh, Planet Eclipse, speaking of some of our sponsors, they were posting this 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 week. If you guys are looking for some female apparel, or doesn't you don't have to be a female, you can wear this as a muscle shirt, I reckon. But it's the uh, Race to Two Girls Racer Vests, new by Planet Eclipse. We are always talking about uh, girls not having any apparel for themselves, so there you go. Um Speaking of Planet Eclipse, ladies and gentlemen, they were nice enough to donate uh, some prizes for next week. We are going to be giving away some prizes for our 500th episode. Join us next week. We'll tell you how to get involved. All you have to do is watch the show uh, and do one thing for us, and uh, you guys will be entered in to win. And it's not just some throwaway prizes. These prizes are pretty cool, and I say that because you will probably be one of the only ones wearing these. Uh, here's an example. Here is a Planet Eclipse, one of the prizes. It's a Planet Eclipse uh, hat, but this was a prototype hat, so they don't exist, nor does this one here. Uh, and if you're not into ball caps, you want more of a winter toque, here's a Planet Eclipse hat, and if you look and flip over the, uh, you'll see on the label, 
in masking tape it says pixel proto sample camo uh that is oh, not cool. a prize that has been uh already claimed by gavin <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, um, i don't qualify damn it and then here's the dual gray uh hat and unfortunately i didn't my photography skills weren't that great it doesn't look very good but believe me it will fit your dome but if you like that or there's some one-off t-shirt samples here as well so if you guys are playing Eclipse fans and you would like to have some of these, Josh, what are you thinking? This is either extremely cool or the garbage that was sitting in a box under somebody's desk. <laughs> at well, this shirt specifically... Which is perfectly fine. We'll take it. Yeah. This shirt specifically would be hard to manufacture because they screened both the, the front of the shirt and the sleeve and then had to sew them together. So that would have been a costly shirt to manufacture. Same with this first one. Um well, even half those hats, the, all that embroidery, the the big thick stitching, that's yeah, gone. man, inexpensive. Yeah, so pretty cool, nonetheless. Um, speaking of hats, I want to give a shout out to a hat company. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Finley, uh, the Finley brand of uh, of hats. Uh, I know Nick Slowiak. You, if you watch uh, Go Sports, you go back, you'll see that he totes them. Um, this is Jimmy. Finley Hickey, he's a good follow on uh, on Instagram. If you guys want to give him a follow, his stories are great. Uh, and their company is, as I said, they've got a unique style, and they make great, uh, great hats. The reason why I'm, I'm giving them a shout-out is Jimmy is also a paintball fanatic. He plays paintball, and he created something and sent it to me. I'm going to open up on air real quick. Um, he also runs things. He does run things. <laughs> Um, so as I say, he's a he's a bit of a paintball guy as well. Um, oh, look at this! Oh, very cool. Um, yeah. Oh, awesome on this audio based. I know. I can't. Super okay. Cool. I, okay. I've dropped Wicked it. I'll have. Awesome I'll have <laughs> shut up. Now descriptive video. <laughs> I will. It is the wrong thing that he sent me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send him an email and get it. It was basically he made some headbands, uh, not headbands, um, goggle straps. I'm saying custom goggle straps. Oh, nice. So yeah. So I apologize for that. Uh, we will get Jimmy and I will get the proper one sent so you guys can see it. But they are pretty cool and they were a limited item. Um, Josh, I saw this on Facebook. Uh, what do you know about the Nerf Hyper? Yeah. So this this was announced by Nerf, obviously. Um, this is the three new blasters that they have coming out. Uh, I believe it's... Oh, they don't actually have the names. Um, But this is the 14 and over Nerf Hyper line. uh, Features the Nerf Hyper Rush 40, Nerf Hyper Siege 50, and the Nerf Hyper Mach 100. Uh, They're engineered for velocity of 110 feet per second. Um, Some of them are capable of doing 100 rounds in a hopper. And you can get them in both a 50 and 100 round. And they have some pretty neat features that we might seem to find that we've heard before because they are including a slam fire function hmm. similar to a pod that one would JG slam, slam pods? Yeah. into a hopper <laughs> yes. neat. and right. uh, larger hoppers. Um, They've got a right up on the Rush 40. It's a hopper fed pullback pistol, holds 40 rounds, retails for about 30 bucks. Siege 50 at 40, uh, plus slam fire punk pump action option. And the flagship, which is the Mach 100, holds 100 balls and fires full auto off D cell batteries. Cool. Yeah, think of this as Hyper's Nemesis uh, option. Very cool. Pretty neat. Good gateway um, for getting into 50 cal. Yes, an excellent gateway. Um, but that 110 feet per second, those are rookie numbers, son. You got to pump that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, just a reminder, guys, next week is our 500th anniversary show. Our 500th, not anniversary, I guess 500th episode. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Um, if you guys are watching us right now, if you're watching us on Facebook, hit that like and share button and share it to any of your uh, paintball groups to to educate people that we're uh, we're out here and that we exist and if you follow us on um, YouTube uh, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell all that stuff that would be of helpful uh, ness as well so why don't we go and uh, check this out we have Joe's uh, uh, latest vault segment and when we come back we're going to get right into our topic at hand 
And then we have mail time, prices right, and a whole bunch more shenanigans, guys. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Oh, stand by. Holding. Holding. <laughs> Having some technical difficulties. Holding. But while we're doing that, ladies and gentlemen, again, while we're waiting, hit that like and share button. And uh, did you find it? Yeah, now was a perfect, perfect time to do it. Yeah. All right. And I will tell you guys what our topic is at hand because we are going to watch you guys in the live chat as well. And that is, is Mech destined for the same arms race that happened in 2000 to 2004? And if you guys remember, that's when the first electronic markers started coming out, and that's when all the cheater boards started coming out and the rates of fire got jacked. And I mean, it wasn't uncommon for someone to get 15 to 25 balls a second coming out of their gun. So we're going to discuss that uh, as soon as we come back. Hey, it's uh, Joe from Flaggers Paintball here with another segment of From the Vault where we go back in history, back into the early days of paintball. This week is no different. Today, I thought I would share with everyone Flag Raider's very first brochure. Look at the different shading films. This was done, if you think of this, this was done in 1983 or 1984 before uh, people had uh, graphics programs. This is all done with letter set shading film. I had a, a logo presented, then they shot from that. But um, we were planning to use an eight shot or 10 shot 50 caliber pistol in the very beginning when this was done that was not available so we ended up using the mark one uzi but at that point i hadn't had the logo changed or modified but you know we talk about uh flaggers teaches the individual the basics of strategy the fun of team sports is easy to learn yet difficult to master flaggers is an adventure everyone can enjoy a challenge everyone can meet Really, what's the difference? What has changed other than the technology and the equipment we're using? Paintball then and paintball now was still awesome. Still out with your friends, still have a great day, and you meet lots of new people, and sometimes you shoot them. Until then, we'll see you next time. Pew -pew. So that was that was Flag Raider's first brochure. It was kind of, you know, not only did you know Flag Raider start sort of on a whim out of the middle of nowhere, but creating a brochure back then was like you didn't have a, a home computer, you didn't have graphics programs, you didn't have a cell phone, so you went to a a, a print a print shop with a concept of a logo. They created a logo. Then they gave you this called camera ready uh, proof of a logo. So you had this black and white, very fine, high resolution image that that's what they would shoot their images from. So then I wanted a camouflage brochure. So I went to the art shop in Waterloo, Ontario, and I got this stuff called Letraset, which was sort of um, you, you cut it out and then you, you, you stuck it on it. And then I did it multi-level, multi-layers because camouflage was three or four layers. It wasn't like multi-cam where you have seven layers of camouflage. I used three, which was, you know, pretty, pretty amazing at the time. And then I laid, I came up with this copy. I went to the print shop. They had some graphic designer at the time, put it all into a paragraph. We proofed it and then I glued it all up, cut it all into little pieces, glued it up on onto this thing. And then they shot and they created a plate and they ran the photo, ran the copies of the, of the brochure. Same, same idea with my business card. I, I did a, a little camouflage business card back in the day and they had to shoot from that. It's, it's crazy to think, you know, you can take your phone right now, take an image, put a PNG on top of your image and away you go. And you've got this, you know, something you whipped up in you know three or four minutes and you didn't have to drive anywhere and it's all over the internet compared to you know going to a print shop going back and forth driving there because the fax machines didn't exist so you go, went back and forth back and forth can you try adjusting this and every time you did it they have to re reprint it redo it and it would come out it's crazy times to think you know, back then to try to start any kind of anything. Yeah. And, you have to think about even catalogs. Think of the catalogs. Yeah. 
you know, they, they'd have pictures and they just, then they'd have to put each page would have to be laid up separately and individually versus nowadays. It's all done digitally for those that have catalogs. Yeah. Crazy. Joe's uh, Joe used to George Hay was asking, what did Joe do before Flag Raiders? Well, he actually used to work at Kinko's. So that's how he knows how to do all these posters and George. After after um, I took. What were you um, saying earlier, Gavin, about MS Paint? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it, that, and Bill Bill Gates was still in college when I started Flagler. What did you? What did university. you have? What did they give you at Kinko's where you had to carry and that added up your color copies? Wasn't it like a remedial counter? Do you remember that? You, you have you had this counter that it was sort of like a flash drive, but you'd put a counter into the into the side of the print uh, photocopier and every time you made a copy it would spin it around it's like one of those things when you went into a when you go into a bar and the bouncer's going oh there's 699 people in here not enough quite for enough for a pandemic but we can keep filling it up but kinko's had one then you take it up and they'd go yep uh you've got 399 99 um images i remember when we did our first phoenix project scenario game I wanted every ID tag to have an individual picture. So I took I took a bunch of my um, uniforms of the SAS and Vietnam pictures. I went to Kinko's and I photocopied pages and reduced them so everybody had like a little passport size picture. Then I created a document, but I had pages of stuff glued together and I went to Kinko's and blasted them off on a photocopy. It's just crazy where we've come as far as technology, not to mention, you know, Paintball, paintball aside, like yeah. from when Flag Raider started with, you know, going to a, a, a print shop to get your business cards done and letter set stuff to where we are now. It's just it, the whole thing is mind boggling. If you think about your first cell phones, my cell phone was in, in a bag like, a, you know, is a Panasonic bag phone. It was three watts. Yeah, I could go to Antarctica and talk to some thing. I could go to Antarctica and talk to somebody. But now to think what you can, the, the technology and power in an Apple iPhone or an Android, I guess, the, their phones too, I suppose. But um, it, 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 it's, you have to think, just sit back and think about where we are and where we, where we started, where we've come from, you know, as we, as we roll into the, the 40th anniversary of, uh, of paintball. Yeah. Um, and Roger Weber is bringing up mimeograph machines. That was, uh, that was his first addiction, wasn't it? Sniffing uh, the, those things, the ditto the machine, yes. <laughs> yeah. When no, when those things came off, you'd smell it. You'd smell that. And there was a bunch of grade four going rocking back like and it. forth, going, "Whoa, yeah. this is awesome!" Yeah. Well, you could always tell the addicts because they had that purple ink around their their noses. Um, why don't we move on, guys? We have the subject to talk about tonight, and that is: Is Mech destined for the same arms race of two thousand to two thousand four? And a lot of you guys sent in messages to Instagram. And uh, our Facebook me- uh, messages as well. Uh, Josh, you had compiled a bunch of them. Um, let's get to a couple of those. And we're also watching you guys in the live chat. We're watching YouTube and Facebook. So uh, get your comments up. See what you guys think. And again, the reason of this conversation is when Tournament Paintball was 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 peaking at 2000 to 2004, everybody was just doing whatever they could to get their electronic guns to shoot and cheat, basically. Um, can we do that with mech? Is that even an option? I think it's the guy with the fastest, you know, fake trigger figure. Just like the fastest when you go to French, like uh, the fastest guy in the trigger wins. If it's if mechanical is the same, you could modify your, you know, you could modify your trigger so the spring is slightly shorter pull, and maybe you could lessen the tension. But yeah. I, I think you're, it's pretty equal, equal yeah. footing. Josh, what do you have? What, what are people saying on the social medias? Uh, Reed Allen Weitzel says, seems that way, and I hope it does not. I was <laughs> excited to see Mechanical Paintball return. It was bringing back old players in 10-man mechanical events. It was allowing other players who might not, who might want to try tournament play a chance to compete. Now it just seems people are modifying these markers, and this is going to cause even more regulations in the sport. Yeah, I do like his point about the whole bring back ten man. I yep. like that idea, and the sort of older school format uh, tournaments. I, I, I was rather fond of those, but yeah. yeah. Well, I, like I, I started playing paintball tournament paintball before electronics really was coming on its own, and 
you, you get these guys with an autococker that had like feather triggers. You had, um, you know, we had this one one kid who could uh, uh, double double pull his trigger and actually get the speeds going really well on a stock autococker. Um, this guy was insane. Um, so it, so like. I don't know where like with mechanical markers you can't say like you can't put caps on it where electronic markers like you get it like you can only like legally you can only ramp to a certain point and you can always do that but with mechanical yeah. markers it really just comes down to unique skill even though we're dealing with feather triggers and I and don't see know. that's that's the one thing i liked about the mechanical being back because you could have somebody on the field you could have a, a team of guys that can shoot 10 balls per second but if you've got someone who's really talented and they can walk that trigger really, really well and get their gun going, like you can get 15, 17 balls a second, right? I think that's perfectly acceptable because if you can do that, that's a skill. That's a developed skill. Yep. It's not a board. It's not electronics. It's not a battery that's doing it. It's you. Yeah. And I think if you can pull that off, good for you. You should be able to. Awesome for your team. Yeah. Arms. It's like in the Olympics. You got a guy that can sprint super fast, but not everybody in the world can run as fast as that one fellow. Yeah. You know what? So your so gun you can, is a little you... bit lighter, and so your trigger is a little bit easier. That's about the extent of a mechanical marker. Like, I don't mean to take the side that mechanical marker is a mechanical marker, but I, I mean, remember when auto triggers kind of came out and people were like, that's cheating. Well, no, it's not. Like, it's, it's still mechanical. Gavin, what what's, what side are you taking on this? You know, it's it's a slippery slope because I, I, I saw the arms race early on uh, in my career as well. Um, and I'm a purist in terms of a uh, Mac, right? So it, it's kind of hard when you have like a Planet Eclipse gun versus a uh, Tippin gun uh, and they're both Mac, right? So it's, yeah. I love the purity of, of the game. And I and to echo the, uh, the other gentleman's point uh, who wrote in, Josh, sorry, that's the reason why pros have come back to play sort of that ten man, that camaraderie again, that the, the yes. sort of the, yep. the true uh, passion for the game that they had versus leaning heavily on uh, on the tech side of it, right? Yep. So it brings back that. So I just I just worry about the slippery slope that we're we're on again. Uh, that we'll have to have a resurgence yep. again about uh, going back to lower forms of paintball. No, I wouldn't say lower forms, yeah. but different styles but it, of paintball. Okay, so, so if you're whether it's stock, stock class or pump don't or... Don't raise your voice. What have you. I'll give it, you. No, I, well, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't quite... I, you know, I, I wasn't quite finished, right? So. I, I know. I thought you were done, so worry. I was going to jump in. So if you're if you're shooting a Model 98, you're going to darn well complain about the guy that's got an M170R by Planet Eclipse, because in my opinion, that is probably one of the best mechanical markers out there. And if I was to play a mechanical division... You damn right, I would get one of those. And some people may think it's cheating, but it's not. And, and and maybe that is part of the arms race. But that's as high as she gets. Beyond that, what are you getting? There's no electronic mechanical markers. What other benefits are you going to get? It it really has a small mechanical marker has a smaller um, um, gap where you go from the worst to the best. Where electronic markers, it's endless. You know, you can have right off the bat where. You know, your dwell's turned up, thus your, your your velocity is higher right out of the gate. You know, you can have that where, you know, you pull the trigger once in a certain pattern when you're off the brake, and it keeps your dwell up high until you get off the, off the trigger, and then it resets so nobody can catch you shooting that gun. I mean, there's so many cheating uh, possibilities when you have electronics, but in mechanical, you're now back down to designers. It's like NASCAR. You know, they're shaving inches or, 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 you know, grams off their car. They're doing everything that they can, but they still have to fit into that mechanical, um, you know. And that's how you know Todd doesn't watch NASCAR. <laughs> I'm right. Am I not? Well, you know what? Every I... car has a minimum weight. That's So they get the cars. But here's where NASCAR has gotten. They've gotten the cars so light that they have to add weight. But there's a huge advantage to that because not only do you now have to add weight so your car is equal, but you get to pick where the eight weight is added, mm. which is a huge thing. I think um, a good analogy for this, talking about mechanical markers, is like soccer. A professional soccer player is going to go out there and they're going to have the most expensive shin pads, the most expensive socks, and the most expensive kangaroo hide shoes or whatever the heck it is they use now. Donker. But... That level of gear doesn't help you that much. Yeah. It might be super expensive. It might be super nice stuff. But, you know, a pro player, 
playing in tennis shoes is still going to be your average Joe. Hey. Or or <laughs> Joe on a oh. on a on a footy pitch because they know how to play, even if Joe has the most expensive shin guards and the most sturdiest footwear. So that's where but I was going to go But if I was this. at French, lick, la, 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 then I'd win. I was going to go with this. Uh, you know what? Um, potentially, manufacturers can host their own tournaments where it's exclusively their marker, yeah. right? Because I would really yeah. love to see skill versus uh, technology versus, um, you know, uh, apparatus, if you will, right? So, like, <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, we're in a slow time in our world globally because of the pandemic but uh if manufacturers would like to uh step up a little bit to do some advertising and host their own tournaments with their own gear everybody has the same stuff that's what i'd like to see right so there's no advantage or disadvantage right everybody yeah. shoots the same sort of stuff yeah. and let's see uh who rises to the top but look at joe joe's been from the beginning of time here with paintball look at when someone came up with their first high pressure air tank or or forget that what about uh, the first bottle of co2 that wasn't a 12 gram oh my goodness that's cheating that's now you oh, know people, that thought people like, were gonna die <laughs> if you if you read some of these paint vintage paintball magazines from the very you know from the you know late late 80s you know th there was a whole controversy constant air versus 12 gram controversy you know whether you know people should be allowed to use constant air or should be allowed to use 12 gram like that's that was a controversy back then and then you went from 12 gram to constant air to high pressure air to mechanical to electro like there's it, it, there, there's all kinds of controversy and don't forget as all this is going on the whole sport's evolving from safety glasses to jt goggles to woodstock masks to pmi masks like there's a whole development of of safety happening simultaneously and guns are going from 10 round tubes to you know direct feed sticks to 40 round ammo boxes to 80 round view loaders to 100 round view loaders to usi loaders to electronic loaders like all this there's like simultaneously as the sport's developing there's all kinds of stuff happening it's pretty yeah. if you think about it yeah um, Josh, I cut you off before. Do you still have any more uh, comments on your sheets? Or are you okay? I, I got a couple that I'd like to read. Uh, yeah. Mike Holstrom um, says it's already happening. There are two arms races, really, the autococker race and the modern mech race, which I thought was a, a good point because the autococker market online right now is hot, 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 as well as the modern mech race. Like you said, there's stuff from Planet Eclipse, right? They can barely keep it on the shelves. Yeah. Did anybody else enjoy um, when Josh said hot like that? Yes. Hot, hot, hot. hot. It's hot, like, hot. you know what's hot? I, I had to get, get something, and I, I'm, I'm gonna walking. Go on a five minute rant I, I, stuff, I stopped. Man. I'm not going to go on a rant. <laughs> I stopped and looked at myself in the mirror with this hoodie on. That's proper hot. <laughs> not me not me per se like I, i'm reasonably handsome for hey someone joe my you age. sexy thing but, but but my hoodie like this tiger stripe hoodie that's hot that's all i gotta say all right sorry Josh. my mom thinks i'm handsome anyway but anyway sorry continue uh mike thompson says uh let's just hope for an agd level 10 style bolt kit for the emac now that we can install a double trigger to pair with the h air valve I like that. And uh, last but not least, uh, Nick Anderson. It's been happening since the release of the EMAC. I kind of think that's where it legitimized it. But I think yeah. that was how it started a little bit earlier before that with the whole Iron City Classic. Um, by the way, Dwayne King in the YouTube chat says, if I had a hoodie like that, I'd be hot too. <laughs> coming soon ladies and gentlemen we're going to wait until closer to Good. the spring when i have a little more time and we'll we'll maybe work on that as well um john jones also says mirror mirror on the wall who is the fairest of them all <laughs> i don't know I, not john jones <laughs> not john jones if you look at his profile picture i'm just kidding john <laughs> one of these days he's gonna get finally pissed off and stop watching this show um Josh, uh, can we move on to something else, or did you finish all the, the, the comments that you wanted to make? I apologize if... No, the rest of the comments were either rubbish or too long to read on air. So, And also, watch your grammar and spelling. Who, me? <laughs> no, the people commenting. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I had, to, I had to clean a lot of those up. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about I'll something. Did you guys know Planet Eclipse has more championships, new mechanical markers, new electronic markers, hell, new territory, including the new MagFed division? Get Planet Eclipse, ladies and gentlemen. Why? She'll take on the world. When the world's greatest players, photographers, and expected parents need the best coverage, most vivid colors, biggest selection, they pull the tab on ET product. Hashtag pop smoke. Pick welded seam, stainless steel hardware, multiple color options makes Air Ups the number one choice for inflatables on and off the field. They are made in America by Brent Davis and his crew. Make sure you hit up airups.com. Dreams fade, ruthless paintball products, colors, supplementation, and craftsmanship never die. On or off the field, ruthless keeps you fresh. Use the promo code BTB15 now for 15% off your order. It's a good looking shirt. Adapt, create, and win. Exalt is in our blood. Make your game boil. Get Exalt, which is available worldwide. Worldwide. From the beginning, you'd stumble down a rocky cliff or waded chest deep through a mosquito infested bog. Whether you're sliding into the snake or running and gunning, GI Sports has the gear for you. Now at the Stormer, Stormer Basic, Stormer Tactical, and Stormer Elite. DLX Technologies, guys. With some true industry innovators with some of the lightest, fastest, and sleekest hardware in paintball, DLX has the power to get you to the podium. And holy cow, that's where I want to be. So thank you to all of our great sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. If it wasn't for them, uh, we would not be here. And uh, just a reminder, if you're tuning in late, next week is our 500th episode here of Behind the Bunker. And uh, another special thing that's happening on Wednesday, April 14th, starting at 8 p.m., Yes, there is a paintball extravaganza because it's happening right here on our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so don't forget to uh, join us for that. More information over the next couple of weeks on that. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in so so far, guys. Make sure you hit that like and and, and share button, especially if you're watching us on Facebook. Gavin, are you um, are you poised and ready for some mail time action? Um, I like action. I can be poised, so hit the bumper and I'll see what I can do. Meltdown. Uh, <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is mail time, the time where I get to rip open my sack and read some of the correspondence that you have sent in. Uh, so I have a small sack this evening because it's been <laughs> quite chilly out. Uh, so a couple of questions have been um, submitted to us already. And if you have some questions you'd like to be addressed, please put them in the chats and somebody can read it out. Uh, so the first question comes to us from Battle Bros 43 from the Instagrams. And he wants to know, uh, or he says, I've heard the NXL is going to four pod and a hopper limit. Is this true? What are your thoughts on it? Is it for all divisions or just pros? Have you heard that rumor? I, I, I've heard a bunch of stuff. To be honest with you, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I kind of don't. I mean, I kind of don't care. I don't. I mean, if you limit the amount of paint that they're going to shoot, they're just going to move more often, more frequent. I think it's going to change the game up. Um, certainly would make it more affordable for players. But on the same token, not everybody lasts long enough to shoot that much paint. And those that do, I mean, you don't see a lot of long points, you know. Um, would, this, would this alleviate it? I think it would make actually some of those long points longer because people would be doing one balling, picking up paint off the ground. And you've all seen those points that take forever. I think that might help propagate that too, so... So would limited paint then change the game or tournament format? Uh, not the format, but certainly would change the playability. Points would either go quicker for some and way longer for others if there if there's a shortage on paint for sure. At the end of the day, I I, I like the format that is now only because I'm accustomed to it. But change is good. Every time the league has made changes and people have adopted, it seems to work out. So we'll see. We'll see. All right, next question comes to us from Tommy Tuomala. And I'm sorry, my <laughs> friend, if I keep butchering your name. Uh, and I think this is maybe um, a throwback question to the Bill C21. Um, so what is considered a replica? HB enhanced broomstick, one-to-one -one scale clone, real firearm? Like what uh, would the interpretation of a uh, replica gun be? I don't know. Anyone else want to I'm, speak on that? I Well, just I'll just say something, of course. Um I remember being at the sportsman show and speaking to our CMP or someone from the Canadian firearms when back in the early days before sort of 
airsoft had sort of gained its foothold, its current foothold. And the fellow said to me, we were talking about airsoft and replicas and stuff. He goes, if it talks like a duck or walks like a duck, it is a duck. So that's kind of how he described, you know, an airsoft gun, like an M4, for example, is an M is a basically a one-to-one -one scale reasonable facsimile of an actual Colt M4 firearm. So using that, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it is a duck. There, there you go. That's, that's kind of where we're at. Um, no, nothing. No, no, I, crickets? I, I, I don't agree. have a crickets. I, no, I, would, I would agree with you. Sorry, I thought Josh was going to speak on this as well. If you comment or ask the CFO, the chief firearms officer or his office, they kind of leave the term replica intentionally vague, which is as frustrating as all get out. But that's done for a reason, because if they find something or someone comes up with something new, then they can just simply manufacture it to skirt around the defined term of replica. So you'd have a hard time figuring out what a replica firearm is for sure. Okay, so uh, under the legislation that's being proposed as well, and I'm not an expert on it, I believe historical mark, well, historical replicas like sort of muskets and stuff like that uh, are exempt from the uh, the bill. So I think that'll be up for interpretation. And I think what the challenge is with the bill, and I don't want to beat a dead horse because we talked about this in a number of other shows we've talked about this as well, <laughs> yes, uh, is it is subjective, right? Um, and, it, you know, it's based on the interpretation of the uh, enforcement officer. And that becomes really dangerous. It becomes really dangerous because municipalities then can uh, choose to, um, you know, interpret the law differently as well. It gives them much more uh, power and overreach. So I don't know. It's for us, it's going to be really, really challenging. And I certainly hope anybody who uh, has the ability to uh, in our country contact those in power to make sure this can go through. And that's all I gotta say. Yeah. That's some good saying. That's some saying. Yeah. I think right. it's some uh, information from the gentleman who ran the course that I took. He has a monthly email list. He's that old school. But one of the interesting things was he was saying was the whole definition of replica firearm. He said if a firearm shoots, it's a firearm, right? So how is it a replica? <laughs> Which I just thought was kind of funny, but. Yeah. Well, I mean, our, our legislation is pretty crazy anyway, right? Imitation thereof is yeah. potentially a it is illegal under the criminal code, but we won't go into that tonight and bore everybody else. But uh, move on to the next question. And this one came in this evening on my own personal chat from Happy Holton. Um, and he wants to know, and this is around the horn, gentlemen. I know we've talked about it before, uh, but now we're longer in the tooth. So let's see if this changed a little bit. What is um, a piece of item that you sold that you really regret? I can go first on that one. I can think of one real quick. I uh, My first autococker I bought, I souped the hell out of it. Everything that I could replace on it, I did. We owned a store, and I saw all the great goodies, and I quickly put in new valves and three-ways and all kinds of stuff. Then I saw another shiny thing, and I decided when someone asked, offered to, to buy it and was offering really good money, I said, okay, sure. I didn't think anything of it, and away it went. And um, my next gun that I bought, the shiny trinket, was horrible. And uh, immediately I realized that I made a mistake. When I asked the fellow to have it back, he had already sold it to someone else. And then from there, I don't know where it ever got to. So you, that one there is one of the reasons why you never sell anything without really giving it some thought or really just not selling it. But yeah, that was a 2K5 autococker. All the upgrades were worth probably three more times than the gun itself was, I bet. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did okay on it financially, but not... I, I wish I would have had it. I would have kept it. I would have been happier having it than the money. What about you, Josh? Um, I've sold a couple classic 68s that I have, or 68 classics. Um kind of wish I had one or two extra around for parts but that's about it really uh, Joe I, mean, I sold <laughs> I sold my original mini mag the first one I ever bought but it was bent 
but I got bent. So I, I, I don't know. I kind of wish I had it back because I didn't realize how easy it was to find bodies back then for it. So. I guess to your point, I did sell a Tac One Auto Mag. Not that I ever really used it, but it would it be has nice a to wonderful it. home. <laughs> Sell yeah. back to you for eight hundred bucks. No wait, how much does it cost to buy a brand new one? Yeah, I don't know. Joe, what about you? As I've always talked about it. Like I, I really, I really haven't sold much of anything. Sadly, um, lately I've been selling things, but I, I still go back to my uh, green Bushmaster. Um, it had an eleven and a fourteen inch barrel. I sold that. I should have kept it. And I had an auto mag sidearm. I should have probably kept. I had a couple crown point um, auto mags, but I sold those because I have a magnificent mini mag. I don't need that. But I, I really don't. That's probably what I, of all the things that I've sold, I feel that I that green Bushmaster um, with the 14, 12, the 11 and the 14 inch barrel, I, I should have kept. And I know who I sold it to. And I did try to reach out to him. Um, and try to find them on Facebook. I knew where they're in Toronto somewhere, and I talked. I, I got in contact with a friend of his from university to see if I could find it again. But I just have sort of come against up, up against a brick wall. But I would buy that one back. I think, uh, Gavin. Um, legitimately, every single marker I've sold, ever, right? Um, and I think about it now because I'm a little bit older. Uh, there was a reason why I purchased those. Uh, you know, age and stage. Um, it, there was a reason why I gravitated to it. Uh, I invested money into upgrades, and uh, it was mine. It was special. Um, and I think, you know, when I was younger and I needed, I needed the money. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you sort of flip guns. But uh, for me, um, it's, it's a big regret that I let go of any of those because it's a part of your painful history, right? So if you have the ability, I would certainly recommend you holding on to whatever you can and not flip it, not um, move it off to somebody else or sell it because uh, um, each of them that you build, and you, you custom build and you accessorize, uh, it becomes special. And it's, uh, it's sad to see them go. Yeah. And you regret that. So everything I've everything I've sold, I regret. Little Bab Spisser in the live chat says, I agree with Todd wholeheartedly never sell anything that you have. Um. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can I tell you guys about a couple events that are coming up before we're because we're nearing the end of the show here, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, World at War Crimson Dawn. Where is this one being held? <laughs> Nobody. This is happening in French Lick. I know. I was waiting for Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I was too. April 9th to eleventh. Then make sure you guys sign up for Ryan Rick Roll. You guys McGee. hear me? We can now. Yeah. We can. We're talking about French Lick. Uh, yeah. Can you help us out? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we can. Can you? Uh, we were talking about French Lick. Can you help us? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Sorry, I got two. I think my ear AirPods have my AirPods have died. Everything's <laughs> messed up. I'm using my phone. I got three computers. Nothing's working. Joe's having some technical nightmares tonight. I sure am. Hey, Super Game Indiana, June 25th to 27th. Join the red team, ladies and gentlemen, and play for our friend Brandon B-Rad Page. Uh, Command Bro Wars. Make sure you guys head on over there. Uh, that'll be a good game as well. Uh, that happens on May 29th to 30th. And here, why don't you guys play with a good friend of the show, George. Hey, he's hey. playing at Fallout at Hell Survivors. George Hay will be the winning general for the blue team, so make sure you guys get signed up for that. Um, and that's all I got for upcoming events, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, next week is our 500th episode, and uh, make sure you guys join in for that. We'll be having some giveaways from Planet Eclipse. So, uh, yeah, come watch and be entered into the window of that. If you guys are watching us on Facebook, we're going to say goodbye to you. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, we're going to continue to broadcast over there. And if you're listening to us as a podcast, don't go anywhere as well because there's more to come with our after show. Uh, guys, we'll say our farewells after if that's okay with you. Uh, ladies and yeah, gentlemen, your show. thanks for watching us on Facebook. We'll see you guys next week. Don't be a freeloader. If you liked what you hear, make sure to hit the share button below. Also follow us on our social media outlets like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, ICQ, and now MySpace. If you want to join the conversation, post your comments and we might read them on the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you for sticking out with us. If you guys listen to our podcast or over on the YouTube channel, 
Uh, yeah, we'll wait for a couple more of you guys to come. So that's it. 500 episodes next week, ladies and gentlemen. The guys and I were talking before the show briefly about all the silliness that we've been through in all the shows and not really the highlights of the show, but some of the lowlights that we had. Um, we're going to have to talk next week and regale people with some of the sillier things that we've been through and some of the history that we have. We won't go into it too much of, in, in depth, but certainly... Certainly, we've had some foot-in-our-mouth situations. We've had... Uh... <laughs> See, we do this show yes, live, sir. and whatever kind of is said goes out, and including the podcast, I do not edit anything. I, From the start of the show to the end of the show, you get everything that we say, and um, if we say something and you catch it, good for you, but uh, yeah, there's no now, censorship. If you did edit it, it would be a 10-minute show. If that. It's almost like a highlights. Hey, this is it. It's safe. Well, the last two-week show sucked. I didn't even come up with a highlight for it. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> no. I've been so busy, ladies and gentlemen. I just haven't had a chance to cut the show into bits and come up with highlights. Um, yeah. And it can't yeah, be the all Joe Gavin beat, show. I'm yeah, glad to know Joe where we streak. are on your priority list. <laughs> it's like, after Joe beat my streak, I didn't care anymore. I'm like, yes. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm like, oh, right. Damn it. Joe yeah. wins. I well, can't you hear anything. Yeah. You still have um, all the prices rights you've won. You're still you're still champion still of prices champ. right. Yeah, reigning champ. Um, Bab Spisser in the live chat wants to know if we're wearing camo tuxedos. We haven't really discussed what we're wearing for next week. We kind of briefly talked about it, but um, I think we're just wearing just... grown up shirts. No, Listen, it's none Bob, of your damn you're business. You're lucky if I'm wearing pants. <laughs> it's none of your damn business. You have to tune in next week to find out. Why are you giving it away already? <laughs> well, I don't. Colin Cooper suggests spe- speedos. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dan and Hardy uh, brings up Juice Box. Juice we haven't, bo- we haven't seen Juice Box on this show in a while. Oh, I should pick up some <laughs> peanut punch. No, you, you should not. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie, but like, viewers. like where I am right now, my studio is extremely close to the toilet, so I'm good. <laughs> nice. Is that why you echo every once in a while? Tom McIntosh yes. says, uh, Tuck Speedo. I might be wearing a wrestling singlet. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> you do you, my friend. You do you. Todd's going back to high school. Ooh, for Dan and Hardy episode. rompers. There we go. What about rompers? There we go. I have more sound again for a minute. No. There we go. So, yeah. So, I don't know. We'll we'll discuss. Maybe we'll all be wearing tiger stripe hoodies since we all like our tiger stripe hoodies. But I will be anti-hoodie because the 250th, I wore a hoodie when you guys were all fancy. Right? Oh, yeah. You better do something with yourself this I'll time. I'll do something else. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a shower this time. Yeah. I'm excited. We've had some videos sent in from uh, some industry people and some oh, other other people, friends of the show. If you guys want to be on the show and, and send in a, a video, by all means, we'll try to get you on the show. Just keep it super short, like 20 to 30 seconds at max. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been good. So I, ju- so I just saw the post about uh, The Simpsons show. It's going to be their 700th episode. <laughs> Those are rookie oh, numbers. Shit. But I'm like, how many years have they been on? <laughs> I know. It's 30, like we are, we're, we're catching them. Well, they're a weekly show, but then they also don't go summer. So Over the summer and stuff like that. Yeah. So they've been on yeah. longer years than we have. We're now, so if you do 500 shows, 52 weeks a year, that's that's 10 years. Oh, we're almost been doing this a decade. Yeah. Have we really? Even I Bob Barker knew when to quit. But again, that's 500 Monday shows, right? There was all the other stuff that yeah, you guys did too. How many prices rights were there? There has to be way more prices rights than there were Simpsons or Behind the Bunker because they were every day for no way. every day oh, they yeah. did a prices right for years. Bob Barker was 16 when he started that show. Oh, I am DB. He's still on. doing it. <laughs> From the grave. Okay, good. Thanks, Joe. Like, <laughs> yeah, how, how many episodes? How many years? Yeah, I don't know. Um, 9,056 episodes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bab, Bab Spisser brings up the point that no one is renting tuxedos right now. Be cheap. It started in No, Joe, that's 9,000, but that's 9,000 with Bob Barker and Tom Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Um, Drew Carey has done 2,263 already on his own. Wow. But that started in 1972. Like, you guys weren't even born then. Uh, no. But we're still punching uh, rookie numbers, right? Like, we got to up the game. Yeah. But speaking of old, old like, those those game shows, did you know Lisa Weber was actually on one of the original dating games? That's Is how, that how he, yep, that's how they met. Roger? Yep. Nice. That's how they met. No. Yep. Really? Yep. 
They want to, I, I think it was to Hawaii that they want a trip to. That's where their date was. I could be wrong, Lisa. Where where did you guys go on your 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 date? If you uh, and that's with well, the original host. What Rogers was his name? Old haircut. <laughs> it wasn't Chuck Woolery, was it? Who was the host of the dating game? It was, wasn't it? No. It sounds familiar, but I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm right. <laughs> you guys are all so old. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, I'm thinking about this. And, you know, I'm not feeling great. So next week is our 500th episode. What do we can do after that? Have we peaked? Is this it? Can we? Like, is there a way you that we can? When you never can we do the episode, Can we do the 500 episodes somewhere remotely, all together, but six feet apart? Like, do you like in a room, the, the state in a word? big, <laughs> in a big. <laughs> yes, I understand. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm looking across the studio, Joe, and I see red and pink smoke. Just FYI, I meant to tell you that last week. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I, I don't like, know. I, 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 Will it, it get better? Is only get worse? Like, what the hell? We've done some remote shows that were some of our best and fun shows. I mean, there was a paintball extravaganza that, I mean, it got pretty rough, but we had a great show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah. one of the, uh, like, in, uh, maybe this is premature talking about it. One of the highlights for me, and I wasn't there, was watching you guys broadcast from PAX. Like that was a completely different venue. Oh yeah, uh, that exposed. Boy, a... was that uncomfortable. <laughs> but it's exposed a large market <laughs> to uh, introducing the paintball, yeah. right? So I there was a was lot of exposures show. of a lot of large markets there <laughs> in those cosplay that was a, costumes. That was some craziness. <laughs> Uh, and Joe's cringy interview with that one gentleman. Well, you know, I know whose mother dated Robert Downey Jr. Man, that guy was, that guy was out there. Whatever, like it, it was, was a brilliant experience. highlight. Yes, for sure. Yeah. The ribs were good in San Antonio. Yeah, Lisa Weber said it was Honolulu that they got sent to. So, or maybe I just made that up. But I'm sorry, Lisa. I was just I wanted to pick on somebody, and I just saw your name pick come up in the chat form. It could have been anybody. Oh, oh, wow. All right. Well, why don't we end this? Because it is, as we say, garbage night. Uh, for the 500th episode, I've solicited our city to push our garbage night another day extra so that we don't have to rush out of the next week's show. So there well, we go. That's so great. Garbage pickup on Wednesday. Awesome. Well, thank you, Gavin, for being on the show tonight, sir. Great to be here, folks. And I appreciate everybody's support in the chat forums. And uh, make sure you tune in next week. 500th episode. 500 Monday nights with us in Behind the Bunker. I appreciate your support. Join us again next week. Chica Estrada in the live chat says you should have uh, Wolf on the 500th show. He was on the first show, and he will definitely be on again, and he will have representation next week. He won't be on the panel, but he'll be, he'll, he'll be on the show. So tune in for that as well. Josh. Booyah. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for for listening and doing whatever it is that you're doing. But I just wanted everyone to know that uh, me being on the show tonight required very little effort. <laughs> well, you had to read. Oh, I did. Yeah, Josh puts I'm a lot. I want now. you guys to know how much work Josh puts in every week for this show. You know, it may not look like it, but I mean, there's sweat on his brow every time we log in for a reason. It's because he's he's been doing a lot of show prep, and <laughs> it's because the light's hot. Yeah, sometimes the, the the lid on his moonshine jar is just a little too hard to get off. Oh, and Joe Kimson from Flaggers Paintball. Once I finally got into the show, it's fantastic. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Parker didn't realize it was Monday night, so he had to abruptly cancel his whatever gaming activity he had planned for the evening with his with his pals. Um, so I'm sitting down here amongst the cluttering cords and rechargeable batteries and xbox controllers and stuff it's just well, mayhem let's, let's apologize anyway, to all his uh, using my phone yeah. well let's all apologize to the 40 and 50 year old single men living with their moms at home that he was going to play with he just didn't know that yeah That's all right true. ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next week for the 500th episode of behind the bunker